How do you know when you lie? Audio on. Right, I think it's on. Seven seconds, does that mean it's yes, on? Yes, it's working. Does it mean it's on? I don't know. Right, hi everybody. I'm not sure if this is actually on or not because I've not done a Facebook Live for absolutely ages. Live is not really sort of things that I do like to do. Um, I don't know why, it's just like something I don't really like to do. Anyway, so those of you that don't know me, I am Lindsay, um, as known as the Queen of Clean. Um, I run social media pages, obviously giving out cleaning tips, home hacks, and lots of advice. Um, I've been on the circuit for a while. Um, I started Gosh, um, about nine years ago, I first appeared on Channel 4's Obsessive Compulsive Cleaners, um, which I literally fell into by complete fluke. Um, I was running a publishing company at the car time, local to me. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, we got a phone call one day, and it was from the producers of Channel 4, and they were basically like, we want to find like a family in your area that are hoarders. Um, can you put an advert in your magazine? So I was a bit like, oh, I loved that show. Um, and we got chatting, we got chatting about cleaning. And basically, before you know it, um, it was just, that was about the Wednesday. On the Saturday, I had a full camera crew in my house. It was so embarrassing. I'd never done any television before. Um, and they all came in, auditioned me. And on the Monday, I got a call saying, we really want you to be on the show. Um, so it was all a bit by chance for me. But obviously, I've always really loved cleaning. Um, when we did OC Cleaners, we had a Twitter platform. And my friend made me the apron that said, Lindsay Queen of Clean on. So I went on to Twitter just as Lindsay Queen of Clean because it just made sense. Um, and it has stuck with me ever since. Um, and it's, it, yeah, it, it's been a, an amazing bubble. Um, but yeah, so that's just a bit of a background as to who I am and why I'm in this position. So I can see that I'm working now because people are saying hello. So hello, everybody that's just said hi. It's just really, really weird. So myself and Swan did put some questions, um, put, put a post out earlier if anyone has any questions for me. Um, this feels really weird actually just sat here talking to myself. So please ask away, ask questions. So I've, um, me and my daughter to have wrote a list of some of the questions that come through earlier and I thought we'd just go through some of them and obviously just answer them but if anybody's got any sort of cleaning issues and they want a bit of advice or they just need a bit of motivation um, screen cleaning or anything then please just obviously pop your messages there for me um, but if any of you follow my channels yesterday I did a post with shopping bags um, they can get really untidy can't they and I'd got into the habit I'd been so busy sort of between about October and before lockdown I was crazy I was actually you know pretty burnt out if I'm honest with you my shopping bag cupboard which is in the hallway was just completely full of screwed up bags so yesterday i did a challenge with my daughters just to fold them into triangles and then a couple of people messaged me and asked about do i disinfect my shopping bags um so most of the time i use sort of quite a big square one which is in the boot of my car which i take out with me and i use instead of a basket so that one i tend to just spray with a bit of detail and then i put it straight back in the car i am wiping over foods at the moment just with warm soapy water and a tiny drop of disinfectant just for that sort of reassurance that everything is okay um and then with the plastic shopping bags yeah i am just giving them a quick wipe on each side folding them and popping them away I think at the moment we just need to be sort of extra sort of careful with these sorts of things but it is all down to personal choice and I don't want to be scaremongering people and saying to people we've got to do this you've got to do that we're going to bring the virus into your home because that's not good advice it's just be careful I've always been that person that's always been in a coffee shop and always wiped down the table um, I've always took hand gels out with me I've always been a massive hand washer if I'm on the train I'm that nutter that's for breezing the seat so I I've always been like this and I think what the virus is actually going to do is it's going to make more and more people like this and when we come out of lockdown I'm not going to be the only person on my commute that's for breezing the train and wiping down the train and stuff I think there's going to be like more or less everybody doing this um but that's just my views on it obviously it's also different I can't really see this because Olivia I need you to scroll down for me babe if you go on my phone and just do the scrolling um, I've had a question about the swan so this is the swan egg poacher 
Um, this is a really great product. So you can have poached eggs with this one, or you can do boiled eggs with it. We only have eggs on a Sunday. We're a bit like that. Everything we do is like so regimented. Um, it's really, really affordable. Now, one of the questions I've been getting about the swan egg poacher is, is this bit here. So when you do your poached eggs and you put your, you obviously put your egg in here, after you've taken them out, sometimes it can be left sort of quite sticky. Your egg doesn't always come out. So what I advise you do is, is rather than using an oil, I suggest that you use a little bit of butter. And just like, like when you're obviously greasing a baking tray, have that same sort of principle with this one. You'll find that when you've done your poached egg, it will slip out much easier. And then what I also tend to do is, is just to use a teaspoon just to sort of prop it so it starts to come out. And then if you have got any egg left in this bit here, you can just scrape it out with the teaspoon. It's really, really easy, and that should stop it. Um, obviously, a soak with warm water, a splash of white vinegar, if you've got some as well, will help loosen anything that's left in there. But honestly, the butter seems to work so much better than the oil. The first time we used it, we used the oil bit messy um, but yeah honestly have a look at trying this with the butter and I think you'll find your experience of it so much better um, and it, it just saves all that scrubbing so spoon um, and butter but it is a really really great little thing I'm just going to check I don't know how you do this here Olivia so I'm just asking my daughter I'm having questions there. oh are how they oh, oh right okay <laughs> this makes sense doesn't it grab your phone and they're there um so, so that's that's really good um Okay, Do you so want me to read them to you? Yeah, read me the questions. <laughs> my so she doesn't want to be seen. They will leave this to me. My kids. white sink has curry paste stains in it and bleach solution hasn't helped any ideas. Okay, so the question there was, in case you didn't hear it, you may have seen it there on the grid, that their white sink has got curry stains on and that bleach hasn't helped. Now, what I find with bleach is... Bleach tends to mask stains for a while. It doesn't always tend to get rid of them. So you might think, oh yeah, it's come up nice and white. And sometimes you go back down in the next morning and you find that the stain has reappeared. So it doesn't always get rid of it. Um, so with something like this, what I would do is I would just put some neat bicarbonate of soda on it really really rub it in um, and then leave that for a good few hours and then just rinse with some boiling water if that one doesn't work another great one that you can try is white toothpaste so when i talk about toothpaste on my pages i always mean the white one not the blue minty gel one because obviously that's blue the white one is a whitener so it's really really great at sort of fixing problems like that so you've got two options there that you can try you can try the bicarbonate of soda really mixed in but you have to to leave it or you can try a white toothpaste and again leave it with all natural cleaning tips they're not going to work in a second you know you do have to sort of think well I'm going to put, put it on pop out do something well obviously we can't at the moment but just go and do something else like do some vacuuming go and read a book in the garden for half an hour come back um, and then it should be okay we got any more babe? Yeah, I need a new hoover and really need to know which one is the best to get a handheld one please. Okay so the question there is somebody needs a new vacuum sorry Olivia's reading so I'm not being rude I just I can't manage everything I'm a bit like that. Okay so vacuums um I have got some favorites obviously a lot of you know that I am actually sort of a brand ambassador for Swan um and the way I work is I wouldn't put my name to a brand if I didn't have complete and utter trust in a product I have got the Swan Hyper um which is the one with just one head and I've also got the Swan um plush which is the one where you can change the heads being completely frank and honest with you they're both brilliant but the hyper just has that slight edge for me. And I don't I can't really explain Which why. Cordless one I think you recommend? I just prefer that one. Sorry, Olivia's talking to me. Now the hyper for me is lightweight. I think it's 2.4 kilograms. Um, it comes with two accessories with it as well. Um, it's so easy just to take apart. And I have had I've had two other brands, I won't mention the names, quite expensive branded cordless vacuums before that have been. One of them was three times as much as the Swan, and I would never, ever go back. The Swan one for me is just practical, the hyper, um, the kids can use it. I've had mine just under two years, and it's still going strong. Um, so in complete all honesty, and you do see me use this on my pages all the time. I'm not just saying this. This is definitely my go-to cordless vacuum. How to clean the iron? Mine is awful last time I scrubbed it, I managed to get it off um, and away an all new finish off it. 
Okay, so Olivia's just read a question out to me, which is how to clean an iron. Okay, so irons, all very dependent on the sort that they are. A go-to product I have for my iron is this product here. It's really affordable on Amazon. It's a couple of pounds. It's the Hot Iron Cleaner. It's a brand called Fortless. I think it's an American brand, not too sure. And this is like a cream that you just put on the bottom of the ceramic plate. You leave it for about five minutes, and honestly, it brings it up really, really well. You can also use this product on your hair straighteners as well. Sometimes they get a bit gunky and sticky. Um, there is the paracetamol iron trick out there. To be honest, I've never had any success with it, if I'm completely frank with you. Um, you can also use bicarbonate of soda. This one does work, but it's time consuming. So if you've got time on your hands, rub your bicarb in and use the bicarb with lemon juice. So don't use vinegar with this one. Use lemon juice, make a paste, pop it on your iron plate, leave it a good half an hour, um, and this will start to work, and then just very, very gently wipe it off. Always be very careful with the plate of your iron. If you use wire wool or something, you are gonna ruin it. And then for the actual iron itself, if you've got one of the ones with a boiler, um, so it's a steam generator iron, what I always suggest here is, is many of the manufacturers that sell these sorts of iron do a product called Cow Stop. So it's a calcium stop product, and it will stop lime scale builder so if you just google your machine with what brand you've got and then look up if they do one of these there are a few options on Amazon as well this will stop the lime scale and this will then stop all the brown bits coming through those little holes and um, so I say it's called cow stop on Amazon you might be able to just just find it online somewhere but that's really good you can also use white wine vinegar Obviously, everybody always says to me, oh gosh, Lindsay, vinegar. Yes, vinegar smells, but it doesn't last long. You'll find that the smell of vinegar will disperse quite quickly. Um, so only use a tiny, tiny amount into the water on your steam generator iron, and you'll find that that will also help um, with the lime scale buildup as well. Next um, one, babe. How often do you scale your kettle? How often do I descale my kettle? Probably do it every other week. Um, I've got this one here. It is a, of course, it's a swan kettle. Um, it's a nice slimline one, um, really nice. Um, and I tend to do that with lemon juice. Um, you can use lemon juice or white wine vinegar. The sun keeps coming in and out, that's why the light keeps changing. Um, so whatever is, is, is your preference. Um, lemon juice in and water, let it sit for a while. So pop the two products in about 20 minutes to half an hour, then boil it. Um, and then give it a rinse and then do a clear water rinse as well um, with your kettle. So yeah, I'm about every two weeks and always pay attention to the spout as well. And what you can do with that is it's just, I've got a lemon here actually in a, in a bag. You can just pop the lemon if you wanted to, depending on the spout, just pop that on there and just let that sit. Um, and that will tackle any that you get around that area as well. Uh, when you disinfect door handles, light switches, how long does it last till it needs doing again? Okay, so it's a question there about disinfecting door handles and light switches. Now, one thing I always say is we've got white high gloss doors, as you can see here. So never ever spray product directly to your door. Always take a cloth, first of all, and spray the product to the cloth and then just wipe the handles. Now, at the moment, in the middle of this sort of virus, the ones that are getting high traffic, i.e. the ones as we're coming in the house, I'm sort of doing on a daily basis. When, you know, when lockdown's over and we know that the virus is not around as much, I'd probably say once a week is enough on sort of your door handles. But just bear in mind just to obviously keep your hands washed because it's dirty hands that obviously cause the handles and the light switches to be manky and dirty. But once a week in normal time, I'd say it's completely fine. But at the moment, your high traffic areas, try and do these at least sort of, well, every other day, every day if you can, babe. Um, She's on her phone. <laughs> how do you remove a burnt hair dryer stain? Oh, right. Where is... Oh, I need it to know... It doesn't say. I, I reckon need, carpet. Right. Just ask the lady where that... I, I can't really answer that one. It's a burnt hair dryer stain. I just need to know where it is. Um, there's um, another one where I wait for that. Black mold stain around the bath. We've tried everything. It's starting to smell now. Okay. So that question there was black mold stain around the bath. That's, that's, that's a nice and easy one. Um, when I used to go out cleaning and I used to do a lot of ended tenancies and some of them were super, super bad, they were all had the black mold and some of it was really, really bad. 
So what I used to do was just literally spray with white wine vinegar or white vinegar, really liberally, really, really spray it, go away. Again, because it's a natural product, you need to leave this to work about 20 minutes. And honestly, when you come back and you just rinse with a shower head, or with a nice wet sponge, the mold will go. Again, if you bleach it, I'm telling you now, it will come back. But the white wine vinegar, I, I don't really understand the science behind it all, but the white wine vinegar will definitely get rid of the mold. To so give that a try, and if you have any more problems, then honestly, just please give me a message and I'll see what I can do for you. What temperature do you wash dog blankets at? Okay, so dog blankets, what temperature do I wash them at? So I use a product for my um, pet blankets. It's a product called Vamoosh. Um, so it's, it breaks down pet hair. Now, it's a really, really lovely product, and it does work on the pet hair, but it does have to be used at a high temperature. Now, the box does stay 90 degrees, but being completely honest with you, I don't like to wash at 90 degrees unless I really have to. So I do just do them at 60 with the Vamoosh product, and I do still find that this is enough. Um, and you can also use as well, um, if you haven't got this product, um, Dettol and a few, um, I, I, there's some different brands I can't think, do a laundry cleanser, as to do one, Morrisons do one, and they are a bit more affordable. I think even QD and B&M do like a 99p one. So a laundry cleanser that you can also pop in and use alongside your detergent. I would ditch fabric conditioner with dog blankets. I think that they don't really like it, if I'm honest. And I think fabric conditioner has its place. I don't think it's really great to use on blankets, if I'm honest with you. Any more, Liv? Mm. Oh gosh, there's loads here. <laughs> I don't think it's loading on here. Isn't it? Okay, right, I've, I've, I can see some here, babe. So um, I have two cats and I'm paranoid of the house smelling. Even though I clean and disinfect on a daily basis, is there any tips you can give oh, me? Not. Okay, I haven't got cats, so I don't really know. My mother-in-law had cats when I first met Rob and I could never smell it. I think a lot of the time we just get super paranoid. When I first got Hetty, I was like, oh my God, my house smells. And I even, when the postman was knocking at the door, I used to say to him, can you just step, step in and smell my house? I think he thought I was crazy. And I said, is there a dog smell? And I'm like, no, no. I honestly think if you're cleaning and you're disinfecting and you're letting the fresh air in, there probably isn't any smell at all. Um, if you are sort of concerned, have a look at some of the carpet refresher products you can get out there where you can just spray your rug or spray the areas that they are sort of more in. And obviously keep their baskets and their litter tray sort of as clean as possible but honestly I think sometimes us pet owners do tend to get a little bit paranoid um, so honestly I wouldn't worry about it too much um, oh, it says how well, I think I'm way behind you here with these messages how to remove nail glue off a dressing table fire bit okay so no Olivia Olivia's trying to answer the that's question that's what I did when I got it on my okay, table right. I fold it off so a lady's just messaged saying how to get nail glue off a dressing table. So Olivia has come up with a tip here. Come and say hi. Come and say hi. Come on. So this this is Olivia. This is this is the I look really red. I think it looked fine. Okay, so Olivia's tip for this one is is she used her nail file and filed it off, which do you know what? That's how you get it off your nails though. Yeah, it does sort of make sense. But obviously there is a slight risk that you can damage your furniture there. So um if it works for you, great. Personally, I would be using WD forty. I find that's really good on glue stains and bits and pieces like that one. So you can try Olivia's tip with a nail file or you can go to WD-40. WD-40 is one of those products that I do really think that you should have in your cleaning caddy. It does so many wonderful things. Um, so get it out of the garage and get it in your cleaning caddy. Next, babe. Um, the bird hairdryer was on the attachment that you put on the hairdryer. I can't get my head around that. How do I clean my composite granite sink, whatever that says? Okay, so granite sinks. Okay, I, I haven't got a granite sink. I have worked in many houses where there has been a granite sink. And to be honest, there was only one product that I found was really good on granite sinks, and that was by Method. They do um, a specialist granite product. Um, and I used to find that gave it a really, really super shine. Um, other than that, just warm soapy water and then I think a couple of microfiber cloths, so one for cleaning with. And then afterwards, I think with granite, you really have to do like a really big circular motion like this to really bring the buff up um, if you are just using the warm soapy water. So warm soapy water or look for the method product. It's a granite one. I think places like Waitrose have got that one in. Dunhills have got that one in. Um, so that, that 
that's really good. Have how, you got any more there? How I've do moved I clean my screen. a oh, sofa gosh. without a steamer? Okay, so how do I clean a sofa without a steamer? Um, that, that's quite a simple one. So depending on the fabric, so if we're talking about a fabric sofa, um, I tend to just get a cloth, warm soapy water, really wring the cloth out. And then as I always say, when cleaning upholstery, work in stripes. So start at the top and pull back and then just continue and go along until you're sort of pulling that layer of dirt off. Rinse the cloth, go back and do it again. When you're cleaning your sofa, never ever work in a circular motion. Even if you're cleaning off a stain, still adapt the stripe method because that is going to stop you from getting watermarks. And once you get a watermark, you know, if you leave it a while, they can end up staying there and sort of just ruining your sofa. So I always think of the sofa like when you're cutting your lawn, you know, when you're working in stripes, you're going up and down to get that pattern. It's the same thing, warm sofa cloth, up and down in stripes, and then do it again with a dry cloth. And you can always as well just get your cloth um, and, and lay it down, and they're just with two hands sort of bang like this, because that, <laughs> that will help get the water out. So it's a bang rather than a rub. And you'll also find that that will help lift dirt as well. Um, are your saucepan swan? Are my saucepan swan? Yes, they are. I've got the pink set from the Retro Vac range, and I've also got the purple set. Um, obviously with me everything has to be pink um, and yeah I've had mine a while um, yeah love them really good and even my husband doesn't mind using um, them how do you cope with Hetty casting I don't know what that um, how do I cope with Hetty? Um, I'm fine with Hetty. Hetty's my dog. Um, yeah, I'm fine. Um, we've got our routine. We come back from a walk. She has her little paws washed instantly. Um, she knows where she can and can't go. She's so super trained. She even knows, like, stop and put a paw up because she knows it needs a wipe. Um, so Rob did a great job in training her. I didn't so much. Um, it's not my thing training a dog, but Molly and Rob between them sort of got her and she's, you can definitely tell she's my dog. Um, I've just moved house and the previous owner had potted plants on the living room carpet and it's left a really bad say, I've tried Dr Beckman but it hasn't worked. Okay, so that question there was, um, somebody's moved into a new property, um, the previous owners had potted plants on the carpet and they've left like a ring stain. Um, the ladies tried Dr. Beckman carpet cleaner and that's not worked. Okay, so what I would do here is I would be using warm soapy water, nice big dollar proportion nut liquid, relatively hot water and I'll pour in about, into a bucket, about 20 mils of white vinegar. Um, I find when these two products are combined together, sort of the power of them is amazing. So have a really good scrub with those. Um, scrub and leave, again, it's natural, you need to leave this product to work. So leave about half an hour. When you come back, you need to do the same method that I showed you with the sofa. You need to lay your cloth down and you need to pat, bang, um, rather than rub it dry. Um, there is another option that you can try. If that doesn't work, which I'm pretty sure it will do, um, white, shaving foam so don't get shaving gel your Gillette blue one get your white one the traditional old-fashioned one you can buy that in Tesco's for 47 pence it's in a blue can absolutely brilliant for carpet stains um, really foamy does an amazing job and obviously it's as cheap as chips so try the white wine vinegar and the washing um, up liquids with the water alternatively try the shaving foam um, best way to get rid of ants Oh, best way to get rid of ants. So I had this problem last week. I was just literally sat here and they were all coming out under the skirtings. I don't know if it was just like the warmer weather's um, aggravated them. So there's two ways you can do this. Um, you can get normal baby talc um, um, and then just pop that down. I'm saying baby talc, any talc, talcum powder. Um, just put that down. They hate talcum powder. And um, for some reason, it just stops them from going any further. So pop that down. And it's much better to use that in a chemical base sort of one that you get in the DIY shops. Another option I do is, and this works for me, um, is lemon juice. I literally just spray the area where they're coming in. So I don't spray it all over the floor, just the area mixed with some water. And I use the lemon juice to get in the baking aisle sort of in Tesco's or somewhere. And then just spray all along. And again, that's what I used last Friday when we had the episode in here. And gone, literally, just completely. But I don't know what it is, um, but that does work for me. Um, how to clean fabric blinds? how to clean fabric blinds. Okay, so with your blinds, you should try and avoid using any sort of cleaning product on them. Just with your nozzle on your vacuum, pop your vacuum into sort of handheld mode. 
and then with a nozzle, just vacuum them once a week. If you have got a stain on them, get a toothbrush um, and then a tiny bit of washing up liquid and just really gently scrub away at the stain. Um, lint roller is another great way. So if you haven't got a handheld vacuum with a nozzle on, grab a lint roller and just go over that. Because you do find blinds do get really, really dusty. Mine do in the conservatory. I'm forever sort of doing those. But try a lint roller handheld vacuum and for any stains just try and be super gentle and just use a toothbrush and again washing up liquid with a bit of warm water and just really focus on that stain um i have the egg cooker i can't figure out the little water measure you need more water for less eggs or are the numbers minutes oh, um, so, um that's here isn't it i think what we do is I've got that here. We fill it up to, we don't use much water if I'm honest with you. We tend to fill it up to like that line there. So it's like the first big line and that tends to be enough. I think we had this issue. Rob did one and put more in and they didn't work as well. So it was a smaller amount of water work with us. But what I'll do is when we do our eggs on a Sunday, I'll video it and put it on my stories on both Facebook and Instagram so you can actually see them. But I think it's more, less water makes better eggs. David might be able to correct me on this. I might be completely wrong, but that works for us, Liv. Oh, I'm finding well, them now. My Hoover has broke. What is the best handheld? There's a few asking about the best handheld. Well, just get get that. So, loads of questions, obviously, about the Hoover here. Bring it here. Look. It's probably plugged in. Always got them on charge. Even when I'm not using them, I've got them on charge. Honestly, it's this. This is the Swan Hyper. Okay, and so that's, you can't really see it. I can't even position it. There we go. There it is. So this is it. And with this silver button here, we just literally make it into handheld mode. And then it's got two attachments. So it's got a crevice attachment, which is the long, thin one for going down the side to the sofa. And then it's got your brush head attachment, which would be great on your blinds and those sorts of things as well. Um, so honestly, and it is so super easy to empty as well. You just literally press the button. I won't do it while I'm sat here because it hasn't been done today. Um, but honestly it's great i have a discount code for this um so i'll pop it up a bit later on for you um i've got some questions here just while she's doing that um favorite swan product so that's a hard one so it's between the hyper and it's between this so this is the garmin steamer this is what if you've been following me for a while you'll see me using this all the time now we we were sent this by Swan um, about two years ago and then we went off on holiday and I took it with us and my husband had a pure cotton Hugo Boss bright white shirt um, you and Jake as well, maybe. Yeah, and Jake had one too, and he was and he was like, "Oh, that's never going to work." His attitude was, "I said we need to try this," and he was all like, "Oh no, no, I have to go down to reception and find an iron." And he was getting all stressed about it, and I said, "Look, try it," and honestly, he tries it, and it works superbly. And ever since then, he's like been a massive fan on it, and because he works away a lot, he travels a lot, he does actually take one with him as well. But it's it's just a nice look. It steams so easily like that. And you just run up and down your clothes with it. It's super easy to clean. You've got a brush head here. That bit comes off. And then you've got this bit. And you can just keep that bit clean. And you can either use it with or without the brush head. So I think I like, I, I think that could be my favourite. Oh, no, you like the this Hoover. On the, this on the back. See, Liv knows how much I like I Liv. like the Hoover, though. So she prefers the Hoover. I'm the gar I think I'm the garment steamer, just because I know how brilliant steam is. And obviously, at the moment, with oh, it's still shooting at me with the pandemic, you know. And if people aren't wanting to chuck bleach all around their houses, steam is a great alternative um, mm. to yeah. products as well. You know, steam will kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses, so it's definitely great to have. And you know, and if you've been on a tube and you've come home and you've got your coat to hang up. Rather than having to wash it every time you've been sort of on the tube or on public transport, you can just get a really quick steam um, because it's not just for creases, it's for refreshing as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that's one of my my favourites. Uh, any tips on encouraging other members of the household help with cleaning and tidying? I do it all myself, help. <laughs> okay, so any tips on encouraging other members of the house to get involved with the cleaning? It's not easy, is it? I do it anyway. So, yeah, I've, I've got three children. Um, and two of them are great. Two of them are more like me, and the other one's a bit like, oh my god, it's, 
it's hard work. I think housework is about teamwork. It's about everybody looking after their space. I think, you know, with your younger ones, you know, set the precedence from the beginning, get them tidy up toys from, you know, the age two, three, they can, they can be joining in. You know, one of the tips I show often on my page is like Lego, you can dust it with an old makeup brush, an old paintbrush. That's a job that toddlers can do uh, it's getting them to look after their spaces um i think if it gets so bad call a family meeting sit down and you know you it's not down to just one person it honestly isn't it is definitely a team effort and break the house up like for us in here being completely honest with you i mainly look after the inside house the girls are good and they keep their bedrooms they'll help with the laundry and bits and pieces like that if i'm on a huge deep clean session they'll pitch in Jake, not so much, depends what mood he's in, but he's 12. And then with Rob, he tends to, because he works away a lot, he tends the to barbecue. do... barbecue. <laughs> doesn't do as much as he should, does he? The barbecue. The barbecue. <laughs> so that's just the summer. No, he does tend to... Our rule sort of was that I do the inside, he does the outside. So he will sort of do... He'll cut the lawn, he'll look after the garden, do the weeding, those sorts of things. He'll clean the cars. The he'll, garage. Yeah, he cleans the conservatory, gets up on the ladder, does all the guttering. He does those sorts of jobs. Um, and I do the inside. And when I've been away, I tend to come in and I'm worried. I'm like, what, what am I going into? But I think... The girls help him so it's not too bad no. but it's teamwork 100 percent teamwork and just break it down what's your best advice starting off in your new home what products you have ready to move in i remember when we cleaned this house oh, at yeah. the start yeah okay so moving into your new home what what you should have in your cleaning caddy so i think Get, build yourself like a bank of cleaning products that you need. Obviously, you need a vacuum um, and you're going to need a mop or a floor steamer, whatever sort of takes your fancy or fits in with your budget. Plenty of microfiber cloths and go for colour, sort of different colour ones, because that always is good. So I'd obviously do pink for sink, blue for loo. Have a good range of cloths. And then I think don't go crazy with products. Don't go into the supermarket and buy literally everything that you can see because you don't need it all. Um, if you're buying a brand new house, then lucky you, because that should be pretty spotless and um, we used to do those clean so we'd work for companies like persimmon and just before um the new homeowners were going to move in they'd go in and have this sparkle clean and um, oh my god they were left beautifully with the ribbon on the toilet and all of that um, so if you're lucky enough to get a new one then you should be fine when we bought this this was disgusting absolutely disgusting um lucky enough we managed to we did sort i don't know how we did it but we moved into here and kept hold of our own our old house for a few more weeks so me and olivia literally come over and scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed but it was filthy it was it was it, it would been rented and it was like had about lots of people living here so it was like different families and different rooms so it was it was bad no one had looked after it but i think multi multi-purpose cleaner a washing up liquids, obviously, a couple of scrubbing brushes, a toothbrush, mascara brushes, because they're really good at getting into your vents and stuff, um, a carpet cleaning products or carpet shampoo or the shaving foam, just in case there are carpet stains, which you probably will find. Um, and then get some natural products as well. You, you might find, I'm probably sure you will find lime scale on taps. Um, so to find your lime scale on a tap, um, you want to grab yourself the lemons. So have a, get a cheap bag of lemons. And I always find if you go to the supermarket sort of a bit later in the day, about three, four o'clock, they're slashed in price. So they're down to about 14p for four. So perfect. Slash them in half and stick them on the end of your taps. If it won't stick on the end of your tap due to the shape or size, just pop a slit down here and literally just leave that on. Um, and that will work really, really well. Um, what else could you have in your cleaning caddy? I can't think. Have bleach in, obviously, toilets. Denture tablets are brilliant. So if the toilet you're moving into has got lime scale at the bottom, you'll find that the bleach will mask it for a few days. So you'll think that you've got it clean, but it will slowly come back. Your denture tablets down the toilet or even try and citric acid down the loo are what's going to actually tackle that hard lime scale build up. So use those. A good stainless steel cleaner um, uh, or baby oil. Baby oil. baby oil won't clean it. Baby oil will just shine it and give you that nice finish. But you can get a really good stainless steel uh, cleaner. Most supermarkets do them. Sib do a really good one. So some really good ones out there. 
And I think that's pretty much it. Um, not plugging the book, but if you have got either of my books, there is a full list in there of the bits and Somebody pieces said, you need. I highly recommend your book. So many tips and advice, which really work. Oh, that's really lovely that someone highly, I have got it here. This is the latest one that highly recommend the book. Um, yeah, a bit different from my other one. I felt like with that book, I had more control um, and it's what I'd visioned with the first book and never got to do um, but with that one I obviously got to follow my vision so I feel happier with this one um, so yeah I hope you lot like it. What's the best way to clean my oven racks? Okay oven racks so you take those out of the oven they're often quite grimy aren't they and we're really lucky we've got a self-cleaning oven so it sort of cleans itself and I always find with your oven you know every time you've done like a roast or you've done like a you've got a hot dish in there try and give it a clean every time you've used it so wipe over the door pour the wax out and just clean them and you'll find with just your washing up liquid and your water that they're going to come up clean if you haven't done that for a while and they've really built up wire wall is fantastic with a bit of washing up liquid um, alternatively take your racks up to your bath um, and pop them in there fill the bath up to cover the racks um, hot water bicarbonate of soda and white wine vinegar all sprinkled in there and then just leave it um, leave it for a few hours and you'll find that that breaks it down really really easily some people are lucky and they fit in the dishwasher if that happens then great um, ours don't fit in ours but as I say try them with your oven so I think ovens are one of the biggest jobs and if you hire an oven cleaning company you can be spending 60 65 pound on a single oven clean and up to a on a double just try and get in the habit of when you've had your had your meal let the oven cool and just wipe it really really quickly straight away it's two three minutes but it will save you that big job in the long run my swan egg boiler is building up lines so would lemon work on this we live in a hard water area yes yes definitely if you're finding you're getting lime scale lemon juice is really good or again the vinegar um so just pop some in the bottom of your egg boiler with your water and hopefully that will start to loosen any that's in there you must be using it a lot more than me um because i haven't had that problem i do sometimes get lime scale on this one but that's because i probably use this at least once a day so that explains that one how can i clean the bottom of a cream frying pan where fat oil has dripped down the side it's burnt on brown and doesn't wash off what did you say did you say it's cream frying pan yeah so it's, it's burnt down the side yeah i assume that means it's white Okay, so the question there was a cream frying pan has, has had spinach over the sides. And what have they tried to use? Anything in particular? Not oh, washing up liquid. Washing up liquid's not working. Okay, so for that one, maybe try a tiny bit of oven cleaner on a cloth. Just a little bit stronger if the washing up liquid isn't taking it off. Um, and just be very, very gentle with it so you obviously don't ruin the side of it being cream. Um, but spray, leave for a while um, and then come back to it. Um, hopefully oven cleaner being that bit stronger should get that off for you. Uh, what do you use to steam your sofas? Okay, so to steam the sofas, um, I, I've got a handheld steamer um, which is really, really good. Um, it's it, oh, I can't remember the brand, but it's, it's a really good one. Um, I've got a couple of steamers if I'm completely honest with you, some floor to handheld. But yeah, just a handheld steamer. Um, and I find when you're steaming your sofas, never ever sort of put the steam directly onto the fabric. Have like, I always remember the rules when we were at school, like 30 centimetres. Have a 30 centimetre gap from the end of the steamer um, and the sofa and then just blast all over it. Now steam will kill germs, but you need to do it more than once to so sort of go over the sofa and then go over again, go over two or three times to really make sure that you are killing sort of bacteria, germs and viruses. Maybe there's not much now. Is it there? I don't know where we're up to on here. I think I've covered quite a lot. Um, there was an answer to the egg question there. Oh, David says, swan's egg, it's more water for less eggs. <laughs> there you go. Right, I'm going to answer some of the questions that I've got on here. Um, spring cleaning, how many hours should we be spring cleaning? I don't think, in, in the current climate, we're all at home, so I think just break it down. Um, if you are still out there and you're working on, on our front line, that is absolutely fabulous. Um, try and, when you have a couple of days off, just try and sort of use that time to do it 
teamwork make sure you involve other people in your family when you're spring cleaning always start from the top of your home and work your way down so if you've got a two or three story property start at the top work your way down pretty much when you're dusting and vacuuming you always dust before you vacuum go room by room don't start a room and then just get annoyed with it and then don't go back to it if you're going to do a room do it properly and it's not just the cleaning it's the decluttering as well so if you're doing a bedroom what's under the bed in storage solutions do your wardrobes do any cupboards and just really really focus on i always feel as well spring cleaning is actually quite um it's, it's quite a nice thing to do i find it quite relaxing and i think the after effects of spring cleaning have a real good sort of benefit because all of a sudden you're in a cleaner tidier space um and i always find my head sort of operates better when i'm in a, in a good tidy mm. space any tips for cleaning a leather sofa so tips for cleaning a leather sofa i've not had a leather sofa for a while we, we have one didn't we when we moved in here so i was just always damp cloth all over um tiny bit of washing up liquid if we needed and then i used to finish off sort of well once i did that sort of daily and then once a week i would use like a leather protector product um, a brand called astonish do a really good leather cleaner you can just use that all over and it used to just buff it up um, and make it look super nice and just restored really why is that still puffing away at me um yes yeah, so that one's really really good Anything else there, Liv? There's just a few bits about your products. Is there? What products? I don't think when they will be released. Uh, yeah, there are some products coming. I um, can't really say much, if I'm honest with you. Um, we decided um, with what's going on um, just to hold fire on things because obviously it's not a great time for everybody and I released the book I couldn't get out of releasing the book I wanted to hold the book back a month um, but once you get a date you have to go with it but with the products I had a bit more control um, so those will be a bit later on um, and just watch this space because um, there are some exciting bits coming um, from myself and with Swan and a few other bits and pieces as well anything else i think we're just losing um track here um okay well, if there's anything else I'm, I'm lost on this completely and olivia says bottom, that not she's before. she's not loading um so i don't know if there's anything else you guys want me to talk about it does feel like i'm just banging on here um and someone just asked me about the micro microwave kitchen well holder yeah i have got the little canisters by swan to the pink and everything the pink. I, i've got i've, I've literally I'm just like, I've got the mug tree, the, the swan, pink. I've got the firm pot on mugs by swans, there's only two left on there today, because my husband, when he works from home, he just has cups of tea all day long, um, I'm surprised he's not been, I've got bread bin from swan, um, I've got lots of stuff, um, oh, pink. I have got, and I know some of you are doing this, it's the 30 day spring cleaning challenge. So when it, I mean, we just spoke about spring cleaning really briefly there, didn't we? Um, so the idea of this challenge was it, was, it was designed before lockdown, but it gave you a task to do every single day. And um, today is day 22 of the challenge. So you can, if you didn't jump on the bandwagon when I started this, you can just start on it again. You just use it whenever it feels right for you. But day 22 today was makeup and cosmetics, like washing your makeup brushes, sorting through your makeup. And I've not done that yet. <laughs> you did yours, I haven't done mine. So that, that's the task for me. But I've basically put really, really simple, easy tasks on here um, that you can do. And it's things that you often forget. Like the other day, one of the tasks was to take the ironing board cover off and give that a wash. Now, a lot of people messaged me and were like, oh my God, I've just never thought of cleaning my ironing board cover. Um, and the reason I started doing this, um, when I was doing the cleaning company, I had an ironing business on the side. So we were bringing in other people's ironing so there was such a need to sort of keep changing the covers between clients and to keep them washed um this is really weird but people's washing smells it smells different it, you know you know who's ironing your ironing so that's when i really started getting anal about ironing board covers so yeah that's definitely something um that you should you should try and clean and also things like your vacuum cleaner as well that's another one how often do you actually clean your vacuum cleaner out you know, I had a lady message me, she hadn't done hers for about a year. She just couldn't believe how, how much dirt and muck it had picked up. But again, you know, you can empty the cylinder, you can empty all the sort of bits you pick up, but, you know, cleaning the bottom bit and then actually cleaning the filter out is so important to sort of keep your vacuum running 
um, super well. And I always find as soon as I've cleaned any of my vacuums, all of a sudden they're operating so much better and you start to get that carpet line back. The carpet line does go, I always find, when your vacuum is dirty. Mm. So as soon as you've cleaned it, you start getting the line back. I've just bought the steam cleaner you recommend from, is there any video of you using it? Um, so yeah, I'll do some steam cleaner videos for you. Um, I've just been a bit upside down this week. Behind the scenes, um, I've been doing quite a lot of press work and I've been doing, I've, I've done some well, some stuff in different countries this week. So I've been a bit surreal. So I've not really been able to do many stories um, this week, but I've I'm hopefully got an easier week next week. So I'll show you the steaming. A lot of people are asking about ironing as well. So I'll show you a bit more ironing stuff. Um, it's just been a bit of a week for me, if I'm honest with you, but yeah. I will do that. Anything else there, babe? Are we drying up? Maybe I'm boring now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really know what else to talk about if I'm completely honest with you. I think I've said, I know, I know people have been on here doing yoga and playing the guitar and stuff. I can't do anything like that, unfortunately. I'm literally just a cleaning obsessed nutter. Um, that's just, just who I am, really. Um, let me just have a really quick look down here. Yeah, new. oh, that's a really good point, actually. When you're moving into a new property, yeah, it's one of the first things that we do is change the toilet seats. You know, if you've not got the budget straight away to change your, riot, um, your toilet, then yeah, get the seats changed because you just don't know who's sat on them, do you? Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty... I'm fussing away there. Let me do that one. I think I'm really behind. Oh, Haley's just received her hyperkin. Enjoy it, Haley. It's it is super. Um, I uh, love your day. Done quite a few. Thanks so much. Um, um, what would you use to clean a marble fireplace? Oh, okay, so we had one of these in our old house again. Um, I used to use the, um, I know you should, it's not meant for this, but I used to use the granite method cleaner. So I used to just wash it over, again, warm soapy water and then buff it dry with the method granite cleaner. And that seemed to work really, really well. So give that one a try. Um, and because it's quite non-abrasive, it's actually a really lovely product. Um, thank you for everybody that likes my challenges. Um, I do, I'm trying to think of a different one to do for next month. So if anyone's got any ideas, so obviously this one is going to finish in eight days time um i did do a bit of a may challenge before so maybe we could do something for may i just think it's important while we're in lockdown that we all try and keep motivated and just have something to do i know some of us are still working which is fantastic but for those of us that are unable to work um, i do think we just need to keep the motivation going um and it, it is it is hard this lockdown isn't it i mean when they announced another three weeks yesterday to be honest my heart sort of sunk a bit because i was hoping they'd like say a week um but honestly we've obviously got to realize the serious side of this virus um and then obviously if any of you were following me i got the message from my holiday company still expecting me to travel to new york um on the 23rd of may and it just feels crazy and they won't make a decision until 72 hours before we actually travel and i'm just thinking there's no way on this planet new york has been so badly hit um that i actually fancy going there at the moment um, but i suppose loads of us are in this position aren't we with holidays and stuff at the moment and it, it's frightening times but i do think if we just have something to do at home oops that's my earring um, <laughs> that's all nice do things like that so like, oh, i've lost it we've got that one in like, these are cool ones it's just on the floor um and I don't even know what we're talking about. Do you know what? I do waffle. I do go on and on and on and bore people silly with my cleaning. Um, but yeah, um, there's some exciting stuff coming up for me anyway, um, which is great. Um, but I think we've probably just about had it. Yeah, Liv, any final questions? Come and say bye. No, she won't come and say bye. Um, even though she's got some good opportunities coming her way at the moment, the twins have got some stuff coming up. Feel quite proud of them, but they're still oh, not got what's the What one brand products do you have in your kitchen? Oh, we've just covered that. I've got the um, swan brand products. I've showed those. Red, I've bin. red bin. I've got the tree thing. I've the got the mugs. Burger. I've got the frying pans. I've got the saucepans. The knife know? thing. I've got the knives. <laughs> I've got loads of swan stuff. Anyway, I think we've done just about an hour. Do you know what? I honestly thought that Helen. I would probably only do about fifteen minutes. 
months. Um, so yeah, anyway, but thank you all so much for listening. I hope I've managed to answer most of your questions. Um, if you have got any more questions, please feel free just to inbox me. It's Lindsay underscore Queen of Clean on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I am on Twitter too. Not that I do much with it because I don't really know what to say with Twitter. Um, but yeah, just drop us a message. But massive thank you to Swan Brand for letting me come on and do this live today. Um, and hopefully I will speak to you or see you all very, very soon. So bye. Oh, I couldn't go. How do you end it? If you end this live video, you'll be able to. Yeah, you have to press that. Do it.